I'm Thomas Barefoot, Barefoot Sound. Uh, we're at AES. Uh, the, the question is, why the MM27s, why the Micromains, why the Micromain 35s? I, I'm pretty new to the whole recording world, and I came into it, I've been building speakers for a long time, and um, you know, I learned this, this idea that, that some, somehow people are tracking and mixing on what I consider to be like, you know, relatively crappy little bookshelf speakers, right? You know, and then they send it off to the, at the very end of the process to a mastering engineer with the real speaker, so he can maybe fix it some, you know, somewhere along the line. And that just seems ridiculously wrong. Everybody along the entire process, especially the people who are laying down the tracks, doing the the, the fundamental real work of the situation, we should be, have the best monitors that they can possibly have. So I set out to to build a speaker that could give could do everything that a mastering speaker could do. The wide dynamic range, low distortion, everything, everything that a mastering speaker could do in a package that can fit and work inside a studio. So um, that was the original concept. You know, I mean, it was easier said than done. It took a lot of technology, a lot of work, and uh, uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's what the that's what the micromains are about. Um, squashing a whole lot of speaker down into a, a manageable size with with uh, as few compromises as possible. I mean, I, I, I feel that fundamentally that, you know, that approach of, of the two-way is, is right from a translation perspective. It, it, the predominant paradigm in, in, that everybody's listening to is essentially a two-way type of speaker, um, whether it's, you know, even car stereos are, are, are uh, modeled after that kind of behavior. So I think the two-way is, is right. That's why I didn't go with a traditional three-way, Tweeter, mid-range, woofer, crossed over around you know 300 hertz or so. Um, it's really the the micromains are a two-way with it with an internal subwoofers. So um, so it translates functions the same way that it, that a two-way would translate, um, but uh, but it's truly full range. You take all the low frequency uh, responsibility away from from the mid bases, uh, hand that over, you get enhanced performance and uh, much better. Uh, um, distortion characteristics, you don't get all that low frequency uh, distortion harmonics bleeding up into the mid-range and the, and the upper bass. Following this idea of, of trying to smash a, a big mastering speaker down into a, into a near field is just the first, the first question was just a matter of logistics. Where do I put all these drivers, you know? So the, the only place that you could literally fit these, these uh, subwoofers is on the sides. Um, the, the, the thing that kind of springs from that, uh, one huge advantage is that we have dual uh, active subwoofers facing in opposite directions. They're loaded into the same cabinet. And internally, the motor structures are locked together. What that does is um, it allows the, uh, the inertia of the, the motor is driving the cones. And of course, you know, Newton's laws tells us for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So that uh, cone inertia is, is, uh, is uh, moving the, the motor structure of the subwoofers as well. And that force gets translated through, trans, transmitted through the, uh, the frame of the driver and to the cabinet. And so the, those vibrations are actually, would actually, in, in most cases, be vibrating the cabinet. In this case, since you have uh, uh, two drivers working in phase, but locked together, but working in opposite directions, all those forces are canceled out at the source. So we don't actually even have to deal with that, with that uh, vibration in the cabinet itself because they, it, it never gets to the cabinet. That's actually one of our tests uh, in production is you just go and put your hand on top with some, with some low frequency content and uh, you, know, you know for sure that the speakers are working in phase. So that's just a, sort of a, like a, you know, a real quick uh, um, caveman approach to, to testing whether the, the subs are, are in the correct uh, polarity or not.